Hi. Welcome back to my channel. We're going to do a quick overview of Gyro Flow with my super special secret sauce. Not really special secret sauce, but AK Workflow. So, uh, make sure you got enough uh, RAM in your machine and a fat enough video card, and let's get started. So, first things first, we're going to open up Gyro Flow. If you don't know how to install this, that's a little bit of the scope of this. So uh, it's pretty self-explanatory if you go to the website, jaraflow.xyz. I'm not going to get too in the weeds on that. And I've got my little demo file here. It's a GoPro Hero 11 source file. 8x7. Uh, yeah, it's an 8x7. 10-bit. So I'll search for my Hero profile here. Boop. Okay, now it's properly... Uh, uh, D screwed up and because normally it would look like this right so it's going to be kind of a square and you see how the horizons curve so it's a spherical lens and this is what you see a lot of FPV pilots posting okay so this is with no stabilization no lens distortion correction it's not the prettiest thing in the world but that's uh, you know, it's good enough for some it's not good enough for us that's why we're here so we got a lens profile loaded here. You can see the gyro information down at the bottom. Uh, so a couple of things first. What do all these sliders do, right? So we don't have to worry about synchronization when we're working with GoPros because it's automatically synchronized. Um, the FOV, we generally want to leave to at 1 because if we pull that, we're going to be zooming in. If we make it under 1, if we zoom out, we're going to be starting to see the edges there, okay? And then here's the magic sauce. Here's what I do. So the smoothness number, that is a time window. So that it, it's in time window in seconds. So 15 or 150 milliseconds time window. So it takes the motion that happens within 150 milliseconds and averages it out. And that's how it stabilizes. So this is the way that I get almost what looks like not stabilized footage. It just looks like I'm a really smooth pilot, but honestly, I'm not that cool. Um, it's just a just a touch of stabilization and that's kind of what we want if you crank this up right it's going to get more like more like uh real steady major zoom in it's all like super smooth you can see the zooming in and out right so it's a little bit too smooth especially because I'm shooting at 24 frames per second with a 180 degree shutter angle, meaning my shutter is open for half of the time it takes half of the frame time. So 1 48th of a second, generally speaking. Um, so if there's any kind of vibration in the quad, that's going to come through if I stabilize it too much. So kind of the way I hide that is I take my smoothness back down and for most stuff, uh, 150 is good. I will sometimes do 200 or 250 for like the DJI Avada or maybe for um, some high frame rate stuff like uh, 120 frames per second with the O3 Air unit. But for GoPro stuff, 150, that works. And you can tell that it's still nice and smooth. We've taken the jitters out, but you can't see the vibration as much. Uh, it's not causing the, the motion blur to kind of like expand out as the camera's being shaken, but it's being stabilized at the same time. So that's pretty much it. So dynamic zooming, right? You get some information here. You get your max pitch on roll and your maximum zoom. Generally speaking, you want to have dynamic zooming on. And I usually make it about 10 times as long as my stabilization window. Um, I, for my 150, I usually go with a nice one second even. It's not too fast where it's going to feel like stuff's rushing towards you as you're heading towards the turn. And it's not too slow where you're going to potentially miss something on the edges when I, when I level out and stop doing flippy flops. So, uh, and then one other thing here in the advanced, the zooming method by default, it's Gaussian filter. So Gaussian filter means that the zooming will try to follow what's happening. But the envelope follower, just by being an, um, kind of a misnomer, it actually looks ahead and pre-moves the image towards where it's going to turn to and it gives less of a rushing, falling back feeling that you would get with real steady. So I find that one to be a lot better. Um, for GoPros, you don't need to worry about rolling shutter correction. Uh, it's built in, um, so you're gonna get nice even frames. 
And then on the export side, uh, here's where some of the magic happens, and this is where you're going to need kind of a beefing machine to get this done. Uh, so you have, by default, it's going to, you know, have your basic 4K option. So we've got a 5.3K 8x7. So if you look at that vertical lines, we have 4,648 lines and 5,312 horizontal lines, right? So if I punch this out here, you can see how the image is being stretched, right? So in the middle of the image, we're going to maintain the majority of our detail because it's not really being stressed out too much. Let me go ahead and start that stuff over again. It's not really being stressed out too much, but if you if you go into the corners here, right, these pixels are getting super stretched. And if we, like, we're only looking at these pixels right here. So these pixels are gone. We're getting rid of those, which is fine. That's part of the distortion correction. But these pixels here in the corner of the frame are going to be stretched also, which means we're going to lose detail if we take it down to literally almost half maybe even yeah more than half the vertical resolution so we want to maintain as much vertical resolution as we can and the way we do that is by going to the presets under 16 by 9 we're going to go ahead and select 8k so that gives us our vertical resolution of 40 through 20 a bit more horizontal resolution and that way we're going to be getting the detail out of those weird diamond shaped pixels a lot more in the corners and that's actually super important when you're trying to add detail and color grading in post. You don't want to just throw the detail away. All right, so um, it says 600 megabits here, which eh, your mileage may vary. You can get by with just putting 200 on there. But the key thing is the chroma subsampling. So uh, the way video works, you have a pixel and then you have chroma subsampling, which is a group of four pixels, and it depends. This is how compression generally works, right? So you have one group of four pixels. You'll have one bit for each pixel, or um, you'll have a you'll have a value for each pixel's brightness, and you you'll probably only have one value for each pixel's for for the entire group's. Uh, pixels color so it'll be a block of four that'll just be one color with different luminance values but one color so you're losing color detail so that's four two zero that's your typical video you're watching on the internet um it's four two zero stuff anything you watch on tv it's going to be four two zero you start getting into more professional chroma subsampling chroma subsampling you get things like four two two which is you have individual values for each pixel's color like just like 420 but then you have different or um, you have individual individual values for each pixel's um, luminance then you have the top two and the bottom two have different values for color so it's slightly more color resolution and then 444 which is each pixel has its own discrete value for luminance and and color that's where we want to be so we have to tell the encoder how to do that this little magic here we're going to change the encoder profile to profile two, which is that enables us to do uh, the higher bit rates in H.265, as well as uh, the different uh, pixel formats. And then we're going to use the pixel format uh, option here and the format we're going for YUV 444 P16 LE. So the great thing about uh, Gyroflow, you don't have to redo all this every time it'll be set up for the last thing you, that you uh that you worked with and that's pretty much it right so it's gonna jump out uh it's gonna shit this little uh underscore stabilized version right next to my uh original file here so i'm just gonna go ahead and hit export so if i were rendering out uh, four, uh, 420 with like 200 megabit, it'd be like, mm, like 90 frames per second, really fast. When you start getting into these pixels, these odd pixel formats, it's going to have to start recruiting the CPU in order to, um, handle these pixel formats. So it's still using the GPU, but the CPU has to get involved. So obviously like we're only going 5.1 frames per second. It's not optimal, but it is what you end up with. When you get into Resolve, you end up with a really high resolution file with a lot of detail instead of throwing detail away due to the lens distortion correction. So I will I will generally bring one of these 8K files into a 4K timeline, 3820 by 21, 3840 by 2160 in Resolve, and I'll work on it from there. 
depending upon your system, you might have to generate proxies. Um, these play smoothly on my system, so your mileage may vary. But this is kind of the general overview of Gyroflow and the AK workflow that I use to get all that extra detail that you see in my GoPro videos. Um, hopefully that will be helpful in kind of demystifying some of the settings uh, for Gyroflow. When you're working with the GoPro stuff, all the stuff on the left here is all automatic except for the lens profile you'll have to search. And these lens profiles exist on the internet. So generally speaking, those that match the input will be highlighted, will be like light instead of grayed out, but you can theoretically select any of them. Um, if you have the Hero 12, the Hero 11 profile works perfectly. It's the exact same sensor, um, exact same aspect ratio. So uh, yeah, but generally speaking, you don't have to mess with any of this stuff over here. Uh, you don't get into this still uh, until you start working with um, uh, forcing the horizon horizon leveling, which would lock horizon up here. And then that would also bring in a whole bunch of other types of uh, sensor integration that has to happen, like the accelerometer has to be integrated. So if, for instance, you have a GoPro on the front of a car, like hard mounted on the front of a car, and you're turning corners, the image is gonna slowly turn because the centripetal force of going around that corner takes the gravity vector and points it to the outside. It's actually kind of a neat effect, but it's not everything that everybody wants. So there are different ways to integrate that data. Anyway, I'm not gonna make you sit through this. So stay tuned for the next tutorial where I will do something else cool. I don't know yet. Uh, I just, I need to do something, right? Uh, I guess I'll plug myself. I got a Patreon. You can check the link tree in the in my account. Uh, I'll probably put it in the description too. Hey, I might actually do something with, with a description for a change. What's that stuff called? Oh yeah, SEO? Yeah, I should go ahead and try that shit for a change. Anyway guys, bye.